Good morning, makers, and welcome back to the studio for another edition of Saturday Morning Craft Along. I'm your host, Agnes, and today's craft has got me very, very chilled out because we're going to be doing some weaving, and weaving is such a relaxing, mindful activity. You can really just get into the zone, get into the flow when you're working with fiber and a repetitive task such as weaving. So here's a sample of some of our um, reindeer and of course they have green um, elements which are not showing up on or blending into my green screen so you can just imagine <laughs> the uh, the scarf and the sweater they're actually green which was not a great choice for my green screen unfortunately but when we switch over to the camera you get a better look at them <laughs> but these are so adorable we made them with just some uh, mixed types of yarn and some sticks that we found outside so definitely very accessible materials um, we're going to be weaving on a loom today, which we have a couple options for. So we do sell a weaving kit that is available on our website. And so everything's kind of laid out for you. We've got all the instructions, but we're also going to be showing you how you can make a DIY loom if you can't get your hands on one of our kits. And we'll be using a bit of cardboard for that. So before we get started with today's craft, I would love to just give a shout out to our uh, award winner or, or contest winner. So we ask you every week to share photos of your creations with us and we are happy to report that this week's winner is Sam. So congratulations Sam on all the hard work you've been doing and your wreath was really really lovely. All the details you put together and all the techniques um, were really impressive. So great job everybody. I love seeing all your images uh, so keep please sending them along and uh, it makes me really happy when I get to see that. And so without further ado, we will switch over and show you what we have going on today. So here, here's a better shot at uh, our little reindeer buddies. We've got Rudolph and Vixen all woven up and looking so cozy and cute. This was a really fun activity. Um, I was thinking about ways that we could do weaving, how we could turn it to a Christmas craft. And as I was working, it just kind of came to life. <laughs> so we're gonna add a bit of a little pom-pom detail that we're gonna show you how to make using a fork. So that's all you need to make a pom-pom. We're gonna be using some sticks, some different colors of yarn. We've got some cotton twine that we're gonna be using for our warp string and some buttons and sewing thread for all of the embellishments. And so that's what we have all for all of our materials. We are gonna be using a hot glue gun to work with the sticks. Um, so that is an option as well. If you have a glue gun. All right. So if you're joining us live, I want to give a special shout out to all our viewers. Please say hello in the chat. Let us know if you're watching. Um, say hello and, and where you're watching from. We're going to enter you into the draw at the end of today's show. So who we got? We got Carissa. Welcome back. <laughs> Anna's here. Jen's here. Welcome, Jen. First time viewing live with us. This is a very, very exciting day. Okay, so if you don't have our loom kit, I'd love to show you how to make your own loom out of cardboard. And I've got some plans actually in the description for this video and also linked on our live stream page on our website. Uh, I put together a little bit of a blueprint um, with some dimensions that will um, help you out to get started. Of course, you can make looms any size. I find this size is really handy because it kind of uh, fits nicely in your hands and you can sit with your lap um, on the couch and do some weaving just on your lap. So I've cut out a square of uh, a rectangle of cardboard and it measures nine inches by 14 inches. And then I made some marks. So I've marked out a half inch section here and then a two inch section here. And then again, repeated those dimensions on the bottom. So uh, half inch and two inch. And then the other thing you're going to need to cut are some uh, more rectangles out of cardboard. And these are two by nine, and you do need four of them. So these are going to get added into that two, two inch section. And we're gonna have two layers so that it gives a bit of space for our string. And you're gonna use, you can use a hot glue to assemble this. You could use tape, but you probably wanna use glue. So I have my little swap out <laughs> ready to go to show you guys. Um, but before we do that, actually, I'm going to show you how to make the markings. So when we're weaving, we're going to be using these dimensions here. 
we need uh, 16 pegs uh, or slots spaced a quarter inch apart. So you're going to need your ruler and a marker. And the way I like to measure it out is just by finding the center. So if I know this is nine, half of nine is four and a half. So I'll just go ahead and make my middle mark. And then I'll just start to count um, quarter inches over from that. So I'm going to do eight marks. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'll do another eight marks over on this side of the line. One, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight. Okay, so and then I have 16 little slots. You're going to repeat it on the bottom side so it's symmetrical. They're all lined up. Um, so after you've done your marking, then you can actually go ahead and glue these on. And I recommend hot glue just so it goes really fast. Okay, and then once those are glued on, I'm going to swap out to my finish loom here. And I'll show you how to cut the little slits. So for this, I just use scissors. And they actually are already pre-cut. But I just cut down to that block of cardboard. So you're just cutting little slits all the way on each mark that you made. And this is going to create a spot for the string to go for when we do our warping. So the reason we use double layer of cardboard, I'll show you, is because we need this little gap here for... A space for your hands to go for when you're weaving. It'll be a little more obvious once we get going. I'm actually going to be uh, weaving on my my kit loom, but I'll show you how to warp this one up. So a couple terminal weaving terminology words, vocabulary uh, we're going to teach you today are warp and weft. So we're going to start with the warp strings, and those are the strings that run vertically up and down. And you, typically for your warp, you want to use a string that doesn't have any stretch into it. Uh, and that way it's going to be nice and strong and it's not going to distort your weaving when you take it off of your loom. Because once we start to put all of the, the do, do all the weaving, uh, things are going to get under tension and, and they're going to start to get tight. So we want to use a string that doesn't stretch. This is just regular like kitchen cotton twine uh, you can get at the dollar store. It also comes in your kit. So you're going to find the end and you're just going to slot it into that first slit that you made. I find you don't really need a knot because it holds it quite tight. So I just left a like a two inch tail at the back and I'm starting out at the bottom left. So that's why I have this note here. First knot, bottom left. And then you're just going to bring the string up to the next little slit and put it in and then you're going to wrap it around so at the back it looks like this okay and then bring your string all the way down and repeat hi sam welcome <laughs> Oops. so the one thing i do find with the cardboard looms is they're not super durable um the one that uh comes with well, the kit loom is a lot more durable, so you can do a lot of weavings. Uh, the cardboard does get worn out, so probably after a few projects, you might need to give it a refresh, build a new one. Um, but if you're in a pinch, it, it works. <laughs> As you can see, I'm just kind of going up in order in the slots, taking my time to get them all set in. Okay, so you'll continue with that going up and down, up and down, and you should end up the last one back at the bottom. So I always like to have my starting and ending uh, of the string, like beginning and end, at the at the bottom of the loom. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to my my kit loom. Have this; it will look familiar. And if you've been weaving us since the summer, you may have been using all of your um, pins. So what this is, it's made out of painting sticks. It's uh, wooden. It's pretty rigid. It's got this foam strip and inside the foam strip we've added little um, straight pins. And so these become the pegs. And the beauty with the pins and the foam is that you can actually take the pins out and you can change the spacing. You can take them out if you're not using them. So if you wanted to do a really chunky weaving, you could like take out the pins and use them like ah. A half inch apart instead of a quarter inch so like a looser weave 
Um, and I actually find it's nice when you're ready to take your work off the loom that you just take the pins right out and there's like no messing around. So the way I have my loom set up for today is again with 16 pins across the top and the bottom. And they are spaced a quarter inch apart. Okay. So all I did was I removed the extra ones so that they don't get in the way. And one little pro tip I actually found uh, really helpful is to just grab a scrap of paper and to use that to cover the bottom. So after we've added our strings, I would add this piece of paper because I find that these get really pokey, especially if I'm sitting on the couch weaving. They're constantly like poking into me. Um, so I'll show you how to add that on once we get all warped up. So I'm going to go right from the start with this one. And for the pins, I actually do like to tie a little knot. So I just make a little loop and put the tail through the loop. So I have like a knot like that. And I'm going to slip it over top of the bottom pin, the leftmost pin, and just give it a gentle pull. Now we can begin to, to run our warp strings up and down. We're going to go on the left side of the first pin and then we're going to go on the right of the second pin next to it. Bring our string all the way down on the left side of the next one and the right side of the one next to it. So we're always wrapping around two pins. And that gives us this lovely spacing. I actually really like to uh, do the warping. It goes pretty quickly and you start to get into that rhythm. <laughs> because it's such a repetitive type of activity, I find you can just really get into the flow of it. And it's, it's also a great thing that you don't really need a, you don't need a screen to be able to weave. Of course, we're on screens today for the learning part. But once you know how to do it, you can just Take this with you anywhere you go. Okay. Last one. So if you have that 16 peg spacing, you will end up the same as me with your ending string at the bottom. So I'll just go ahead and cut off a few inches for the tail and do my tie off. So when you're tying your final one, you just have to be extra careful to make sure that this last string doesn't end up too loose. So I just kind of hold it with a bit of tension until I can move that knot down. All right. So once we are all warped up, it's kind of like a harp. So you should have some bounce to your string um, and it shouldn't be too, too tight. So nice and springy. So we're ready to go. The next thing we're going to add is a strip of like cardboard, card, card stock, and we're going to weave it in. So we use these for um, spacing out, like providing a space for tying off your strings because um, you do need to leave a little bit at the top and bottom for when you're going to take it off. So that's why we provide this piece of paper and we're going to just weave it in and out of the strings to get it to be heated. So I'm just going an over under pattern, getting this paper in there. Okay, and then I'm gonna push it all the way down as far as I can get it. So it should hit the bottom of the loom. So I've, now I, ha I know for sure I have enough for tying off. If you wanna give yourself a reminder up at the top at your weaving, you could take um, a ruler and measure out two inches I'm just going to use this other spacer I have. You could draw right onto your strings. So I'm going to just run a marker across it. So now I know when I get up to that mark, uh, it's time to stop weaving because <laughs> I don't want to run out of room for tying. There's my pro tip. And one more thing we're going to add to our loom is our shed stick. So this is like a gigantic popsicle stick. They're really, really cool. You could use a ruler. So make sure your ruler is like wooden or really, really strong. Uh, a, a painter stick would work the same as well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna weave this in the opposite way. We're gonna go in and out. 
And now we've created um, a shed. So when we turn the stick on its side, we can open up our strings and there is our shed. <laughs> so this is going to make the weaving go much faster. So 50% faster because um, you don't have to go with your needle in and out, in and out um, when you have a shed. And this is going to be, yeah, really handy. I like using it. So I also um, find that it's good for beating down the fibers, which I'll show you as we get started. So, okay, we've got our warp, our shed, and now we're going to start to add our weft. So if you want to remember the word weft, you think weft goes right to left. So it's this, they're this, the fibers that go side to side, right to left. And I have a selection of fiber we're going to be working with today. I'm going to start out with my brown fuzzy yarn because I am going to be making another reindeer. If you if you don't have brown yarn, you can definitely create other creatures. Um, or maybe if you only have white, you're you have an albino reindeer. <laughs> so just use what you have. Um, don't get stressed out about not having the right colors. <laughs> but uh, we're going to end up cutting off some of the yarn from the ball and. I always like to do my wingspan, and that is your arms outstretched like a bird. Um, and also we can double up that yarn. So if I want my weaving to go really quickly, I will measure out a wingspan's worth of yarn, but I will double that. So really I'm gonna do two wingspans worth of yarn because my yarn is not super chunky and I want my weaving to go that much faster. Okay, so this is how much I'm using right now. I find that if you do um, two, if you do a, like a really long piece, like um, maybe four wingspans, it's going to be too long. It's going to get tangled. So try to keep it to your wingspan. Um, and if you want it to go faster, double up your yarn. Okay. So we're going to need a, a needle. And we're using this lovely plastic needle that has a really big eye for getting the yarn through. So super easy to use. Again, I'm going to double up my threads or my yarn so I have it doubled up here and I'm going to insert it into the needle. This part can, can be tricky depending on how fuzzy your yarn is. So if you're having trouble, you could always put a bit of tape on the end, kind of like that shoelace trick where it helps get it through tight spots. So when you pull your yarn through the eye of the needle, you actually want to give it maybe about a foot through and then the rest of the yarn is going to be long so that's kind of what it looks like once it's on your needle and i find that sometimes with kids when they're weaving um, they end up pulling the needle until the yarn pops off so one thing to help with that is you could take a little bit of masking tape and you could actually you could just pull it closer to the end if you're going to be taping it and then just like literally just tape the yarn <laughs> to the needle. So there's no way um, it's going to slip off. So if you find it slipping, there's my little pro tip to help with that. Hey guys, we are ready to start weaving. Very exciting moment. Um, so we're going to pay attention to the pattern that's already been established with our paper. Um, so we're and we're going to go the opposite way. So I'm going to end up going. Um, underneath the first string and then over top of the other one and let's just check our shed actually is this gonna work yeah so the way I have my shed stick set up I can actually go ahead and open it pass my needle all the way through I have this lovely big space now And then you want to leave about three to four inch tail because um, we're going to weave that in at the end. And you can close up your shed stick and you have a couple options for beating down the fiber. So your kit does come with this comb, which is really nice for pushing it down. But I actually found a really a faster way is to just use the shed stick and use that to push your fiber down. So kind of don't even it's faster because it's already there and you don't need to keep like picking this up and putting it down I find that when I'm weaving on my lap um I I always lose my comb so I started using just the shed to push it down and that worked really well for me so 
I'm ready to go back this way. And I can't use, I can only use my shed in one direction. So if I open this up and went back through, it would just undo all of my weaving, right? Because it's the same pattern. I don't want that to happen. So I have to close my shed and now I have to do like pick up each string one at a time and follow the opposite pattern. So if I know I'm over this string and now I have to go under. And so just go over under. And the beauty I, also with this size of weaving as I find that um, the needle is like just the perfect length to get through in one pass. Okay, so pull it gently and you don't wanna pull it too tight because um, something's gonna start to happen <laughs> that you don't want. So if you pull it super tight, you can see the warp strings are starting to buckle in. So that's why we got to be gentle with the edges and we're going to leave it loose and we're just going to beat it down like that. Now, once we're back to this side, we can go ahead with our shed stick, beat it through. I always like to kind of hold the end and give this a little bit of a tug, leave some space there and then just push it down and then go back. Keep weaving. Okay. We have some questions in the chat. Okay. Ooh, Krista is going to make a polar bear. <laughs> awesome. Um, welcome, Catherine, to the show. Awesome. Everyone is still waking up. Hope you're kicking back with a cup of coffee and just enjoying the show if you're not ready to craft along yet. <laughs> if I was the one watching the show, that's certainly what I would be doing right now. Yes, you can make a snowman, a polar bear, and then Sam says you could make two sheds. So with this style of loom, it's difficult. You wouldn't be able to add two sticks in and have them work um, the same way because they would get kind of caught. Um, but if you have ways to make your weave and go faster, by all means, please invent some ways. Um, but just the way this is set up, um, you can only have one stick and it going in one direction. Okay, so I'm going to go back. I do have a TV swap out ready today, so you guys don't have to watch me weave this entire thing. <laughs> I did think ahead. You will, get, you will get faster also as you go. Oops. Got caught on uh, one of my strings here. Somehow ended up going through the middle of it. So it's just a simple repeating pattern. We're doing something called plain weave, which is again just that over under pattern. I do have um, a fancier weave that I can show you guys. I do want to show you on my sample um, the difference between this one and this one. So Vixen is definitely a more of a beginner project um, because there's less color changes happening. So you can see it right now I'm working on the base. Once I run out of my yarn, I'm going to switch over to a different color. Um, I can show you guys how to do that. And then I'm going to go back to the brown. So I really am only so um, weaving three sections, three different colors. Every time you have you change colors, you're going to have two tail ends to weave in at the end. And that is a little bit of extra work. So you can see on Rudolph, I have one, two, three, four, five. I've changed color um, six times. And so that means at the back, I just had way more tails to, ta to tie in. So if you're looking for a challenge and you're looking to spend a little more time on your weaving, you can definitely do as many color changes as you like. And yeah, so just, uh, just to give you an uh, expectation, <laughs> start out with uh, Vixen if, you are a beginner um, so that way you don't get frustrated or, or get too tired <laughs> that's taking too long okay so i'm gonna do maybe a couple more rows and then i'll switch my color if you run out of your yarn before you're done weaving that section you can just add more you can just take a new length and, and keep weaving. There we go. 
go. That was a great amount. And I can take the tape off. Take my needle off. And again, you want to leave it. You want to weave um, the leave the ending about three, four inches. Don't weave until you run out completely. You always need that tail end to weave in at the end to make it all secure. So if I'm ready to change colors. I was actually thinking I could do a red sweater. So again, I'm gonna start out by measuring my wingspan, stretching out my arms. I'm gonna double that because this yarn is quite thin and I don't want my weaving to take forever. I will double it up. Find the ends and put them together. Oh, a penguin would be super cute. Yeah. And the thing is, like when you you're if you do a simple one, you can make it look fancier just by doing those surface embellishments. So definitely ways to up your game. <laughs> so penguin would be super cute. Uh, you can do some embroidery for like the tummy. I think a penguin with a bow tie would be absolutely adorable. So hope you make one, Jen. <laughs> I got my yarn doubled up here. I'm going to find my weaving stick. Get it through. You can certainly weave with just a single. Um, you don't have to double up your yarn. I'm just doing it so it will go faster. So you'll notice that you do see the warp string and you might like the look of that. Um, but if you were using your yarn, like a thinner yarn, you could uh, push the fibers together like more compactly and you'll end up not seeing the strings as much. So it would just be like a denser pack. But we're going for speed today. So to start it out, um, I try to keep my tails, like if I have already a tail here, I'm going to try to get the red tail to start on this side, just so it doesn't get so crowded over there. So I will just go ahead and find my pattern again. And I know I can open up my shed. Leave my tail there. Close it back up. Okay, and then continue the pattern. It's really easy to undo mistakes um, on something like this. Open up, pull out your yarn, and fix it. There we go. So this process is exactly the same. Keep building up your weaving. Yes, the holiday sweaters on these animals look absolutely adorable. So, penguin with a holiday sweater. I'm really excited to see what, what you guys come up with. All right, I won't make you guys watch me weave this entire thing because I do have other things I want to show you. But I hope that got, um, give you a, like a good start um, and sort of demonstrated all of the steps. And of course, you can rewatch re this video anytime. You can even slow it down and speed it up on YouTube. That's a nice feature. <laughs> so I'm going to swap out to my other loom. Da, da, da. Hey, look at that. It's already done. Magic of TV. There's my red sweater. I wove in my head and I am uh, ready to take this off of the loom. So you can see I stopped when I had two inches left. So I think what I'll do is pull out the paper. You don't need that anymore. And I'm going to start to pull off the little pins here. And I'm going to do it just a few at a time. So what we're going to end up doing is tying the strings to each other. So I'm just going to remove the first four pins. Now I have these two strings loose and I can tie them to each other. So we're just going to do like a simple knot and then double it. So we're going to do it twice so that it does not come undone. Okay. So I recommend you just do it um, like two sets at a time instead of taking off all your pins because things will start to like be floppy. <laughs> 
and harder to control. And this is like a nice way to do it. We're going to end up tucking these strings to the back so you don't see them. It'd be cute to give all the animals like, you know, those like ugly sweaters, <laughs> ugly holiday sweaters. How tacky can you make it? <laughs> I'm going to be adding uh, some jingle bells to mine. Sequins. This is like a really great project to combine weaving and sewing together. I had the idea this morning, um, so I didn't have time to actually do it, but we could turn this into a little stuffed animal as well. So. um. We could add a, a piece of uh, felt and, and sew it and add some stuffing. I think that would make a really cute gift. Okay, now down at the bottom, because we did add those knots, I you have to pull um, pin out completely, like we've been doing. And I find that at this point, because we've released the top, the whole thing wants to come off, um, except for where we've um, added the, the little knot. So you do have to pull that last pin out to release your weaving and you can just like stick it right back in so it's ready to go don't lose your little pins um i would put them back in your loom right away so they don't end up on the floor and in your feet <laughs> constantly stepping on pins in my studio so down at the bottom we're gonna just kind of give it a turn and show you how to tie these off it is the same process where we're just taking two strings and tying them to each other so even though this is like a little single i'm still gonna use it the tie like so and then I'll just go down the line and find the next two kind of push them out of the way to give yourself some space here tie those to each other so the reason we're doing this is that so your weaving doesn't fall apart um, because everything could, could just kind of come loose if we don't do this tying step Okay, and actually, as you come to the end, you're going to have three. So what you could do is actually take this single one and just kind of buddy it up with the one next to it and then just tie them all to each other. Doesn't really matter. Um, as long as they all get tied in the end, we are not going to see these strings because we're going to do a little bit of hemming. All right, so it's all tied off, ready to go. Looks kind of messy because of all the extra strings. So now at this point, we're going to start to tidy it up. We're going to need our um, a sewing needle. So I like to use this yarn one. And I think I'll show you guys. Maybe first we can do the hem at the bottom. So I'm going to take a bit of brown yarn and just maybe about an arm's length. Good. We are going to end up folding. Holding this and, and turning it about like a half inch to the back. We could trim these up too, actually. Make these a little bit shorter. So this is what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, this is the front. And I've just folded this messy edge down about a half inch. Probably as minimal as you can manage. Okay, and now we're going to do a little bit of stitching with some yarn to secure that. So it gives you a beautiful, clean look at the bottom when we do this little folded edge. Okay, So just use the same yarn that you were using to weave that section because then that way your stitches will blend in. So I'm just putting a single length of yarn through. I'm not going to make any knots right now. Just get it through like a little bit so it's not going to fall off your needle. And then I'm going to insert from the back, just go straight through your weaving, pull it, and leave a tail. So leave a tail about that long. So you, we're going to tie it now so that it doesn't come loose. Okay, so I've tied that down. And now when I pull on this, it's not going to pop out. So that's all that step is. I know it looks really messy. It might be difficult to understand 
but uh, hopefully you can rewatch this. And when you see the whole process, it'll make sense. And I'm going to bring my needle from the front and I'm just going to do a little stitch the edge. And I'm going to pull it through. So we're just doing a little running stitch along this edge. I know it's difficult to see because it's all the same color. <laughs> now I'm back at the front. So put my needle one stitch length over. Send it to the back. Pull. I'm probably going to do about, you know, six to eight stitches. Yes, very satisfying, the clean edge. <laughs> All the messiness is going to be at the back. We don't have to look at that mess. Okay, when I get to the end, I do have to make a knot to finish it. So I'll pull slowly until I have this loop form and I can send my needle through the loop. Give it a tug. So I'll give you a little look at what the front looks like now. Okay, we still have all these messy strings hanging out, but there's the, the finished edge look. Okay, so you would um you would just do it to the bottom to start, and then you can maybe start picking away at these extra strings. So anytime you change color, you're gonna have all these loose little guys off the edges. And the best way to weave them in is to use your needle, like the big yarn needle. And I think I'll show you maybe with this red one here. So just go wherever your, your, your uh, yarn is. You're going to take your needle and you're going to insert it into this channel. So we have like these channels that run up and down. So you're going to take, insert the needle um, at the start of like just right next to wherever this tail is. Okay. And I like to do it like the second column in. So not like directly on the edge, but like a, one column into the edge. And you want to weave your needle about an inch in. Okay, then you can pop it out so that the head of the needle is now next to where your yarn tails are. And you can go ahead and feed them through. So like so. And now you can gently, I like to kind of spin my needle as I do this. In your needle and it's going to pull the tail through and of course i have a really long tail so as long as i have it about an inch i'm i'm okay to now cut the extra okay and there we got rid of that messiness so it's nice and hidden do all of your tail hiding on the back side because you can still kind of see the work you, you can still see it um and you don't want it to show on the front i'll show you one more time on this side I'm going to put my needle in right next to where the tail is. Kind of weave it in and out of these little chunks. Try to weave it into a section that's already red so that it blends in. Okay, and then put it through the needle. Once it's in there, now we can give the needle a gentle spin. I just find this helps like make it go through without touching. Pull it gently. Um, and it's possible that your yarn will kind of get caught and maybe start to bunch up. So be super gentle with your your weaving. Because if you pull too hard, the whole thing will start to distort, which is actually happening a little bit here. Now we can trim that extra. So I would keep going until all of my tails get um, like kind of hidden on the back. And we're going to just ignore them. <laughs> Pretend like this is really neat. Now we still have this, this top part um, with those strings hanging out. And again, you could do the, the hem. You do lose a little bit of your, your head. It still looks good. We are, I'm going to show you now how to add the stick on. So we're going to like hem it and add it to the stick at the same time. So 
Things go a little faster. Oh, Jen's got a great suggestion. Jen has actually done a lot of weaving. She's an expert. And she's telling us that she finds it's easier to weave the tails while it's still on the loom. And that's very true because it's still under tension and it's um, just easier to handle when it's on something larger. So great tip, Jen. Thanks for uh, tuning in and, and letting us know your pro tips. I love it. Okay. And okay, so we're gonna we're gonna cut a stick. So I'll I'll show you how I like to cut mine. This one's like a pretty good size, but if you have like a really big one, or if you want to add like little um, offshoots for your antlers, I have a simple little saw. It's like um just like a hand saw picked up at the surplus store. <laughs> so it's got really small teeth and easy to kind of cut at the wood. I'm not gonna cut all the way through, but what I'll do is kind of hold it on an angle, like a 45 degree angle. I'm going to get the cut started. I don't have to cut all the way through because then I can just take my pliers and put it right next to where I made that initial cut and just kind of snap it. And that makes it, cuts it, like makes it break off exactly where I want it to break. And it leaves this nice little angle so that when I go with my hot glue gun, it kind of already going in the direction I want. So oh, I'm going to add these little bits on later after I get my little buddy attached here. So we're going to be using, again, the same color yarn, whatever the head is, about an arm's length, maybe a little longer so I don't run out. We're going to end up doing a little bit of a whip stitch. Get your yarn through. Same way we did before. I like to pull this through at least six inches so it doesn't fall off. And then the rest is long. And I'm going to tuck this to the back, fold it up to my stick. And actually, if you have like clips, maybe I can add a clip. If I have any handy. I have this giant clip. <laughs> if you have binder clips, this is like a good way. This is like a massive binder clip, but. If you have smaller ones, this is a good way to kind of hold it together. And that way it doesn't like move around. It's kind of in my way today though, so I'll just drop to the side. Um, I'm pretty good at holding it together. So I'm just going to put it from the back, pop it through the front. Okay. Anytime, you got to always leave a tail for tying. And we're just going to whip it around the stick. And bring your needle to the back of the work and pull. This yarn in particular likes to catch on to things because it's kind of fuzzy. So now I've got just, I've wrapped around the stick and my, now I'm back to the front. So I'm going to go back over to the back, find a new place for my needle to come through. You're going to whip it back over the stick and your needle through the back to the front. You can kind of see the pattern starting here. Just little whips all around. I find this is the fastest and less, uh, like, easiest way to put it on. So it's hemming it at the same time as attaching it. a couple more stitches and then we'll tie it off and i think next we're going to show you guys how to make a little pom-pom nose and then we'll add some arms and any other embellishments whatever we still have time for today okay got to the end before you do your last stitch as you're doing your last stitch make sure you pull slowly so that you have this loop and you can send your needle through the loop and do your final knot nice and tight. Um, to get rid of, uh, like to end off, I'm going to switch, flip it to the back 
I still have a long tail here. And what I'll do is I'll just feed my needle back through all of those like little loops. Anywhere into the back of your weaving, just kind of weave it through about an inch. So this is going to secure the tail. Pull it until you've run out of the yarn. And we can cut the extra off. Okay, any extra tails, go ahead, weave them in. <laughs> Take your time with it. If you're going to turn this into a stuffed toy, like you're not going to add the stick, you have all these tails, you could actually just kind of keep them in there. They'll become part of the inside. So you don't technically need to weave them in if you if you want to turn this into a stuffed toy. Okay, next we're going to add a pom-pom. So to do that, we're going to grab our fork and some fiber. So I'm going to make a black nose. I already have a Rudolph. We need to start working on all the other reindeer. I'm going to cut a piece, maybe yeah, about six inches or so. Longer than my hand. And I'm going to put this in the middle of the fork like this. Okay, this is going to be the yarn for tying your pom pom. And then we're going to start to work right from the ball. And then we're going to, so I'm going to hold my fork and my string kind of all together. And then I'm going to start to wrap around the outside of the fork. So you just kind of put your thumb on there and then just start to wrap. Wrapping. And I'm wrapping it about 30 times around or just until like I feel like it's full enough. I would recommend like a minimum of 30. I'm not actually counting right now. I'm just going to eyeball it. <laughs> okay. Something like this. Got the extra. Okay. Now we're going to take that tail that we cut and bring it up to the middle like the middle space so we've got one two three little gaps between our fork and you want to bring the string through the middle one so it's in the center of our pom-pom grab the other end and now we're just going to tie them to each other cross it feed it through you just like tying your shoe okay now you're going to pull it as tight as humanly possible <laughs> That is the secret to making pom poms is like the tighter you do this little pull, uh, the better your pom pom will turn out. Once you have it tied once, we're going to tie it twice, but I actually like to slip it off the fork first. And then that way I can pull it as tight as possible. Ugh, like your hands should hurt. It's that hard. <laughs> okay, then you'll do your second knot. And pull as tight as you can. Okay. So this is what my little blob of yarn looks like. Now we get to take our scissors and it's best to have really sharp scissors for this. Sharp as you can manage and find. And we're going to start to cut along. I'm going to cut all the loops. So my center string is here. On second thought, I probably should have tied this with a different color so you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'll just retie it here. Black on black does not show well. Okay, there's my center string. Made a new one. You can also look up uh, pom pom tutorials if this isn't clear, but um, there's lots of them available online. So there's your center string, and you should have like this, like two halves of your pom pom essentially. Okay, and then so you're just gonna kind of hold it. So you see like the curvy edge and we're going to be end up trimming down the whole middle of your pom pom and your scissors will only probably cut a couple strings at a time. So just kind of feed your scissors in there. Give it a snip. And work your way all the way around. Show you what it looks like halfway cut. Everything's going to start to puff out. There's my little waistband. And now because I've cut it, all these little 
fluffies are coming loose. So if you didn't tie it super tight, you might find it's starting to fall apart on you. But okay, pom poms are a skill. <laughs> you can always make more. Keep working your way around. All right. Now it looks kind of like a weird sea creature and things are starting to fall out. You want to grab onto those like long strings. So I like to leave the strings there and trim the rest. So give it a haircut. And for this, I'm going to take a tub. So all of like the little yarn confetti ends up going into the trash later. Give your pom-pom a trim to give it that nice round look. This is, um, oh, this is like, you're not going to be able to avoid not trimming it. <laughs> and it's fun. So. Take your time, get it looking nice and round. Trim off any high spots. I love making pom poms. Oh, a stuffy would be cute. Maybe as an ornament or a mantelpiece if it has weight. Yeah, great idea, Krista. You could add some um some rice into it, kind of like when we do our sock buddies. We always add rice for a little bit of weight. Actually, I'll trim up these two long tails because I want them to blend in. And I'm going to use my white ones for attaching it to my weaving. So as long as you have two long strings for tying, you're good to go. Your finished pom-pom should look something like that. Now to add it in, we're going to need that needle again. Get my space a bit. <laughs> Easy to get messy carried away. Um, and we're going to Feed it onto the needle, just one side of the one of them, okay? And then you'll decide about the middle. You're going to stick your needle through, pull it, and then you're going to go ahead and add, feed it onto the needle, second string, and then we're going to feed it through again. So right next to it, out there. To the back. Okay, now you'll have your tails poking out the back. Give it a tug so that your nose is nice and snug on your face. And you can flip it over and tie those two tails to each other. Once, twice, okay, and then trim the extra. We'll have a lot of trimmings with this project. So there is the front. Okay, if you want to go ahead and add some features, you could sew on some button eyes. You could do buttons down the front of the sweater. Like so many opportunities to make this look adorable. You could sew on a little bell. Um, lots and lots of options. If you want to add arms, I'll show you how I did that. I know we're getting close to the end of the show. What I did for arms. I will show you really with my white. Yeah. So I ended up cutting, I make, made a braid essentially. And all I did was uh, I made six, pe cut six pieces of string. Well, actually three doubled up. So you want to make it about, you know, what is that? Like six to eight inches, but doubled. So I've got one. Two, three, and I'm doing this many because I want it to be like chunky. Okay, so I'm gonna have three strings doubled over like this. Okay, put them all together, and then you're gonna tie a little knot at the top. It's always a good idea to make this longer than you think um, because. It does take up like space when you start to braid it. It does tend to get shorter, right? So I've got my little um, side with the loops up here. So that could be kind of like the the digits. <laughs> and now I've got six strings. I'm gonna just pair them off into little sections of two, and just start to create a braid. So just crossing over outsides in. Making a nice little braid. 
If you want all of your arms and legs to end up the same size, it's a good idea to cut all of your strings um, out at the same time so that you're not guessing later. As you get close to the end, you're going to need to leave a little bit for making another knot. So, a little short, but I should have cut these a little longer. Give it whatever you want. Okay. Sometimes it's hard to get all the strings through your knot. <laughs> like I'm having trouble with right now, but there you go. That's good enough. So that's kind of what I did for the arm. I did go an extra step with my Rudolph and I added a wooden bead. So if you have wooden beads, something with a large hole, you could try to get that onto it. It is like a little bit difficult. I ended up having to put tape on um, this end before I tied the knot. So it helped get the bead on. After the bead was on, then I tied my knot and trimmed it up. So it's like a, you know, extra challenge to add the beads, but they do look quite nice. Um, I realized I didn't show you guys how to add the scarf. So I do want to show you that special weave technique before we run out of time. Because I realized some, some of you might want to replicate that. Go back to this, um, this loom that I have on the go. And for the scarf, we're doing a weave called sumac. One of my favorites, actually. Best done with some chunky yarn. So you might recognize this yarn. We've been using it the last few weeks. Uh, last week we did use it for our wreath making. It's our t-shirt yarn. So you need a chunky yarn for this to look good. So either your t-shirt yarn or anything that's like bulkier. Um, you could always like use a bunch of strands to make some chunky yarn. I'm going to be using about an arm's length. And the t-shirt yarn looks really, really good for this step. So at any point in your weaving, you want to add your scarf. Um, this is how you do it. So you take your arm's length of chunky yarn. You're going to pass the fiber behind the first two strings on the left. And you're going to pull this little tail. It's going to end up being one of the loose ends of your scarf. So however long you want that to be. Okay, then the longer piece. Should be over here on the left. We're going to take it and we're going to pass it in front of the next two strings. So we're working in pairs, like string pairs. So we're going to pass it in front of these two and go behind and pull that whole length all the way through. So essentially, all we've done is we've wrapped it around and then we're back to the back. We're going to push that down so it's like this nice big stitch here. And then we're just going to take it again and go to the next two strings. And we're going to pass it in front of those. I find it handy when you have two hands and I pull it up, push it behind. Okay. And now we have two little stitches and you can see that they're going to start to get stacked up onto each other. I'm going to go to the next two strings behind. I'm being really gentle with this. I'm not pulling too tightly. I have three little stitches. And when you push it down, they make this nice little slant. So we're going to end up going all the way to the edge and then going backwards. And it's going to create this beautiful like braid look. So this is called sumac. If you want to look up other tutorials, um, that's how other people do it. Lots of stuff on YouTube. Okay, and then I'm at the last two, so I'm just going to go around once. But I'm actually going to go around the same set of strings twice. So this is at the very end. Let's wrap it around twice. You have like two little wraps around those. Now we're going to go this way, doing the same thing, just kind of in reverse. So I'm going to take the next two strings, and this time I'm going to wrap it from left to right. So it exits that way. And then just repeat. So one and wrap it around. And push it down. And then we're going to start to see that pattern come through. You can already start to see those V's. Looks kind of like it's knitted.
down. Okay. Looks like about an arm, um, arm's length was perfect amount. So as you get to the end, you're going to do your final wrap. Okay, and then what I like to do to kind of finish it off is I will like tuck in this tail like through right through here and just kind of poke it out. And that way it just kind of keeps that tail end arced where I want it. There's that beautiful sumac weave. If your tail end is too long, you can always give it a trim. And like I said, chunky yarn does work best for this because you can you, you see that pattern and it fills it in nicely. Hope you enjoyed that. That's I definitely think you should give it a try if you have the opportunity. All right, we are actually um at the end of our show, but we still want to do our prize draw for all of our live viewers. So if Carissa, you would like to get your draw o -matic going. I'm going to see if there's anything I'd missed while we're waiting. Yeah, I think we I think we managed to cover everything in pieces. Uh, I hope you guys found that really educational. <laughs> Maybe you learned some things. Got some stuff to try out now. I'm going to keep working on mine because uh, I really like that stuffy idea. And I would love to to create a finished sample to show you guys. So I'll be posting some images. Let's check in and see if we have our winner. Today is Catherine. Wow, congratulations, Catherine. Thanks for tuning in. So I want to, again, give you guys a final look. My little buddies here. And uh, I'm going to switch over. There we go. So I want to thank everyone again for tuning in. If you made it to the end of the show with us and you end up doing um, your own creation, please share your photos with us. Tag us online or you can go on our website and there is a submission page there. Where you can just upload your pictures if you don't use social media. So uh, if you made it to the end of the show with us, please consider giving this video um, a thumbs up and, and subscribing because that does help us out. I hope you enjoyed this craft. And, and again, please, 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 please send me your pictures because it does really make my day when I when I see all of your creations. And thanks again for watching and we'll see you next week for another craft. Have a great weekend. Bye.